Hello there, YouTube. Laguna here for Final Fantasy One. Now, I did know that I bah, I do know that I started a series on this a while ago. Just for some reason, for me, I feel like the Red Mage just ain't cutting it. It was my first time using a Red Mage, so I kind of expected a little bit of uh, well, a lot of disappointment. So we're gonna hop in and we're gonna actually start from the from scratch. We need to do this the right way, the way that I'm used to doing it. On that note, we're going to pop right in, and we're going to have some fun. Gotta love that PlayStation logo. It's been a while since I've... Like it's been, it had been such a long time since I've seen this that I'm so excited that I can see it again. But uh, the plan is to go through all the Final Fantasy games, and the reason that the, the Red Mage doesn't work out for me is because the Thief has like a really low defense right off the bat and like I know that there's all the characters that I picked except for the warrior have had low defense already sorry I'm snuffly <clears throat> but just the red mage is such a like he's almost a glass cannon if that makes sense I'll kind of skip over the other crap um so the only thing that's going to be different on this one is instead of a red mage, I'm going with a black mage because I ran out of really good spells. Uh, that's kind of the trade-off. You you kind of have to take from it what you will. And instead of the... So instead of the thief, we're going to go with the monk. And instead of the red mage, I'm going to go with the black mage. Because the red mage, despite the fact that he can learn fire 3, he can't learn ice 3 and bolt 3. And it's like, what the... F Brig, like, you know what I mean? Anyway, I'm gonna choose to be a monk this time. Gotta name at least one character after myself, unless it's like, if it's pertinent to the storyline, I'll, you know. And of course, we gotta name myself Luna. It would just be iconic to name this character Vivi. Actually, no, I don't like Vivi. Let's go Furion. Like, oh yeah, like Furion Stormrage in the Warcraft world. He was a good, like, elemental magic. Yeah. Furion. Or Damien. Damien would be a pretty cool name for him. And a warrior. What would be a good warrior name? You know, I've been watching a lot of Crossing Swords recently. I could go with Patrick. P A T R I. No, there's too many letters. This is the problem with Final Fantasy 1 as well. There's just so few characters that you can actually pick in the game. Uh, just let me let my hair down a little for this. Oh. There we go, that's better. Uh, what's a good warrior name? That's, that's probably a good... Should have started with that. Um, I mean, Mervyn was fucking hilarious. It's Mervyn. Um, this is always the trouble is picking names. Just wait till they get into the Sims. That's going to be ridiculous. Luna, Laguna, Lark. Screw it, Leon. There. Screw it. Proceed with this party. So, I was also looking on the uh, the strategy wiki for a lot of people who are playing Final Fantasy 1 for the first time. And they apparently narrowed it down to seven battle combinations. And somehow when I was playing through the first game, or not okay, the, first game, the first time, I actually picked the, the right battle combination. So the, the whole trick on this one. Now, apparently the the original setup is your, your main character takes the most damage, then as it goes down, it reduces the damage down to like... 50, 25, and 12.5 percent. So that's kind of why I ordered it with the um, the warrior first. Swine knight. Now there's not really a whole lot that I can say about this right now. It's it's going to be a shorter 
video because I'm going to cut out all the BS if that makes sense. Okay, leather armor. Chainmail and two shirts. So I guess the, the main thing I can think of to consider on this is I'm going to have a little bit less damage output on this playthrough because my warrior and my monk are my, my main two. Whereas before I had the red mage, the thief, and the warrior. Uh, so the red mage is apparently like ideal to start off with. So like the best ones I guess the people go for, you have to have at least one warrior. If you have a warrior you can go with like a thief, white mage, black mage, red mage, white mage, black mage. And there's always going to be like a damage dealer or a warrior, a white mage, and then another damage dealer and a black magic user. And so that's why you'll see a lot of builds that kind of come up with warrior, white mage, monk, black mage, two red mages, warrior, black mage, warrior, red mage. Like you see a lot of like those kind of setups. <clears throat> anyway. Forgive me, by the way, I just kind of woke up, so I'm going away for it. So by the way, this Nunchaku has 15 attack. We are going to come back to that once we get leveled up a little bit. There is a reason I'm mentioning that right now, because I will forget. Ooh, I'd rather have 15 accuracy than one attack. There we go. So as you talk to the townsfolk, you'll see that there's kind of nothing really going on. Prophet Lucan, Prophet, blah, blah, Prophet Lucan left Cornelia, saying he was off to find the Crescent Moon. I'm assuming the Crescent Moon would be a Crescent Lake. Oh, please, please rescue the princess. Well, I didn't even know the princess was missing. His Majesty believes the Light Warriors will save the princess, as the Prophet Lucan told him. Cool. Hi there, handsome. Wink. Our king is searching for the Light Warriors. Wait, can you be? Please, go see his majesty at once. Love the song. Travelers, is it true that you are the Crisp Bearers? Shing. The prophecy says when darkness veils the world, four warriors of light shall come. But, your majesty, we have no proof that these four are the true Light Warriors. Surely it is not coincidence that four warriors bearing crystals have appeared now. Brave ones, I need your help. Please rescue my daughter, Sarah. Garland, once a knight in his majesty's service, has abducted Princess Sarah. We have learned that he is in the Temple of Chaos, north of Cornelia. We attempted to rescue the princess, but his powers far surpassed ours. Perhaps you wish to cross the Northern Strait. The bridge that once spanned it was lost long ago. If you bring my daughter back safely, I will build a new bridge. I am counting on you. Cool. Our king is searching for the light warriors. Wait, can you be? Yeah, you'll see a lot of one, one off dialogue. This queen has shut herself away in her room out of grief. And, and, and funniness on this one, the original NES translation had to say that she locked herself in her room, but the door was wide open, so it was kind of really, really funny to see that, you know. That wasn't actually a lock on, on the door. I am Jane, Queen of Cornelia. Please save my daughter. I beg you. Cool. And you? I want my sis back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We know. Such a good song, though. Like, oh. Our ancestors sealed weapons away here and left the key in the elven prince's keeping. He was to guard it until the light warriors came. Our ancestors, yeah, whatever. Same dialogue. So, by the way, if you look here, you, uh, the door is locked with the mystic key. We'll get the mystic key later. Luckily, I didn't go through, like, the entire game just to start over again because... It was about a quarter of the game, honestly. <laughs> I took 420 steps. That's funny. 
The other thing we want to do for battle prep as well here is we want to go through and get some spells. So we definitely want her to have blink because as a white mage she is the one who's going to be taking all the healing. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm allergic to something in this apartment. All the healing goes under her belt. Against undead enemies, she is also the one who's going to do it. And we would rather have 80 evasion instead of like 5 defense or 8 defense or whatever it is. Same thing with this guy. Like, yeah, we need fire, but we also want to put enemies to sleep and stuff like that as well. And I'm one of those people I need to have things alphabetic. It's a need at this point. Oh well. Not at all important. I feel like that's sarcasm. I can't tell sarcasm. Oh, I saw a different townsfolk person there too. Who are you, green-haired girl? From where did you come? This is Cornelia, the city where dreams are woven. Honestly, it... It seems such a long time has passed since I left the town of Provoca in the east. I mean, fair. I can't even afford an antidote. So anyway, back on the game here. We're going to the battle screen. We are literally just going to level up a couple times. Because I do want to show you what was up with... Laguna and his... Monkhood. Now his Nunchaku is actually kind of weak at the start. But it's kind of interesting because it's so weak. And I'll show you why once we get to it. Come on. I mean really, the Black Mage is like no damage even with a knife. I think even like... Even Luna with the hammer in my previous playthrough, when she was on 4th slot, Oh, there he is. 5 and 6 damage. 7 experience? Ooh! Now bear in mind as well that when you're playing the Origins version of Final Fantasy, you're going to have a bestiary cup pop up on your screen as well when you get to the config menu, and it tells you how much experience each creature is going to give you. Now it does get divided by 4 and then rounded down to the nearest increment of 4. Four. So basically in this one I had five goblins I was fighting. Five goblins times six experience points is 30 experience. Divide that among four members is 28 and a half per character. And it rounds out right down to, or sorry, seven and a half per character, not 28 and a half. Seven and a half per character. And it literally just rounds out right down to seven. So you actually lose experience by not, you know, by fighting off monsters in, in, in excess of four or eight. To get the best bank for your buck, you want to fight like the same monster in a group of four or the same monster in a group of eight, because otherwise you're just going to be screwed. But you also see these things unlock as well, just the art pieces. And we'll kind of come back and observe this art when we get there. Now the only thing I, I want to mention on this is with Laguna's equipment, or the monk's equipment I should say, he has two attack and five accuracy. Just keep that in mind. We'll, we'll come back to this. So here's a group of four. So each of them gives six experience points. So in this battle, all my characters should gain six EXP. Ooh, nice. Thank you, Furion, for your knife abilities. And see, that's what I like. Instead of losing, like, five experience per monster, you know? Not losing it, but you know what I mean. And see, like, 
with Laguna or with his nunchucks in this case, or the monk and with his nunchucks. Feels weird talking about myself in third person. Um, it doesn't do terrible damage. Like to be like a, a starting damage dealer, it literally does enough damage to wipe out a goblin in one hit. So that's not too much of an issue on that. On the accuracy side of things, that kind of eh. Then it becomes a little bit of a dilemma. Enemy strikes first. I'm surprised this is the first enemy strikes first I've seen so far. Because when I played on the previous, bleh, previous playthrough, why is the nose so itchy and stuffy? <sighs> Must be the weather. A bit of pollen in the air. Anyway, um, on a previous playthrough, like, every second battle was a, an enemy strikes first, enemy strikes first. It was like, why? And I don't know if it's to do with the party configuration at this point either, because, like, for example, having a thief in the party, they may not have as much agility right off the bat, and they'll have more agility as the, as the game goes on. But if a monk, for example, starts with higher agility than a thief does, that might explain why I'm getting less um, back attacks. Anyway, as usual, Leon gains a massive amount of HP, but he'll stay at 22. So you want to make sure you're going to uh, an inn every time you do this. Uh, 31 HP, that is mint. Agility, Endurance, Luck. Strength, Agility, Intelligence, Endurance, Luck. Intelligence, really just Intelligence. So anyway, he still has 15, but now he has four attack. So this nunchuck thing, when you get through to like level 7 or 8, at that point in time, like yes his accuracy is increased by 3 already, so that's already mwah, mint. But his attack goes up, but not with his weapon equipped. So his nunchaku actually give him a, an edge for like the first, let's see, 2, 8 levels. So once he hits level 8 or 9, we can actually take off the nunchaku and he'll do more damage bare fisted than he does with the nunchaku. So that's kind of why I like the, the monk a little bit more, is because you have to spend less money on armor and equipment and all that stuff. So on that note, we're going to go through and we're going to at least get one more level up and we'll at least go through the temple. We'll get, we'll get to the point where we're ready for the Temple of Chaos. But like his accuracy is just so terrible right off the bat that it's just kind of like eh. But uh, you can see though, like when you gain all these HP points and I don't know, sorry, HP hit points, it doesn't actually increase your base, and that's that's kind of what I don't like about the game from a programming standpoint. It's like it's like if I'm 100% healthy. Like, I have no health problems whatsoever, and suddenly my HP goes up. Why is it that suddenly I'm now, like, 50% healthy? And I guess it should take those ratios into consideration. It's what I was hoping to, to see in this game, anyway. There's also a lot of goblins that you'll find on the first island. So there's a couple of other monsters that you'll want to fight. Like, the Crazy Horse is one of them. Um, they actually give pretty decent experience right after that. The Tarantulas and Cobras, I think was the other one. They get some pretty decent experience as well. So it, it's good to see, I guess, what each monster will give you, but... Yeah, there's the Crazy Horse, speaking of the double. Ah, uh, yeah, 27 damage. It's weird that the White Mage does so much damage to the horse. See, 15 experience. That's a little better. But if you get into a crazy horse battle, it's... It's a bit of a hit and miss. Because if I hit the warrior, it's like, boom, 1 damage. If I hit the mage, it's like, boom, 20 damage. And there's the Black Widow. And oh, look, they strike first. And see, even the white mage does more damage than the bunker first. It's kind of unfortunate. And I also kind of wish that all the monsters had experience that was di 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 divisible by four. Nineteen. 
How did... Nope. I'm also trying to change the channel a little bit so I don't swear as much. Some of the rage games, like Bennett Foddy, I will swear still. But I'm trying to keep this as family friendly as possible. So that's kind of why I'm restarting the series. Because like with the uh, the YouTube algorithms and stuff like that, I, I want to at least make sure that I'm not, you know, screwing myself over. Speaking of screwing myself over, D has a great ability to wipe out hordes of undead, but only if they get to use it first. Because if you if your entire party wipes out the skeletons and you kind of screw them, that sort of thing, so that's that's fine. That's fine. That's just fine. It's just fine. And this is also kind of where I need to go to the end. See? Like... It's a trade-off, it really is. Like, do you want damage? Or do you want to actually survive? Okay, I don't want to have uneven experience numbers, so... Come on. How is it that none of these characters are freaking escaping from battle? Like... There we go! Jesus Christ. Preemptive strike? Ooh, maybe I get to run right away. There we go. Finally. Anyway, we're gonna go back to town, because now that I showed you how terrible these Black Widows can be, you'll understand the importance of going to an inn. Which, by the way, I have also learned the hard way that inns do not cure poison. That tasted like pure water. I don't like running from battle, but if it's to preserve my experience ratios per character, then you bet your ass I'm gonna run from battle. <clears throat> and this is kind of like the starting point into the Final Fantasy series. Is that the server? Nope, that's got this one on it. Cool. Now this is also kind of why I let one of my characters die as well. I wanted to show you that inns don't actually revive you. There's a separate building for this. And this is kind of why you want to have a balance party as well, is because you wish to revive this person? Yes. And then they they request a donation, otherwise you can't revive your character, which is kind of like extortionate for a priest to be like, oh, you want to revive? Well. How about for the betterment of humanity, you, you know, revive a light warrior without you know, requesting donations. And I guess that's kind of the um, the point that I'm trying to make on that one is keep your characters alive. Just just keep them alive. That, that's the only thing I can say on that. But uh, at long last, sorry, Mervyn and Locke and Luna and Laguna. I'm gonna switch this back to a party that I'm used to. So anyway, <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to do, now that I have my party back, and my gold, obviously, which I probably should have did this before I slept at the end. I wanted to uh, kind of briefly mention as well, focus, it's really weird the focus lowers a foe's evasion by 10 points. It just, it just seems really weird because like most of the Final Fantasy games in focus it would actually end up like increasing your own intelligence or magic power. So focus is kind of a terrible spell in this game, like I don't like, there's no enemy that you can't hit if you don't have the right level. I guess that's what I'm trying to say on that. 
Oh look, we're only two experience the next level. We may as well get that done and knocked into the park. But it's also interesting to see that the monk, for example, has the um, the barehanded attack boost, but it doesn't apply itself to the nunchaku. Like, I know this seems like a really weird thing to focus on, but like, you figure with more strength you'd be able to do more damage with more weapons. Like the warrior, for example, he always gets strength for his weapons. I don't know, it just feels like it, uh, doesn't quite sit right with me. Leon, 27 HP, strength, agility, endurance, and luck. Luna, there's the HP boost, doesn't take him over the, the warrior. Strength, intelligence, endurance, and luck. Luna, shitty HP. Virion, really shitty HP. Then in fairness, by the way, with the whole swearing thing, I'm just trying to avoid the F-bombs more than anything else. Just getting that out there. But anyway, as we look here... Whoop, one second. So he has 16 attack now. But 6 attack there. So instead of like where 2 to 15 gave him a 13 boost, now it only gives him a 10 boost. So we're kind of encroaching on the, the point of diminishing returns on the Nunchaku. But anyway... That's kind of neither here nor there. Wolfie! But see, now that we've gained three levels, or sorry, two levels, we're at level three, now we can start to fight the other types of monsters and kind of go in into the, the Chaos Cavern, at least see what's there. Mostly I plan on editing this video later, because this, this, this tends to be a very grindy game. Like, way too grindy. But I guess at this point I just kind of want to fight all the monsters at this point, so it's just... It helps. It's also like wild wolves, werewolves, there's a whole bunch of like other fantasy monsters are just kind of like a recolor of the previous iteration. Ooh, Goblin Guard. See? A recolor. There we go there. Could not have had more perfect time. But yeah, it's just literally a regular goblin and just recolored purple. Which, I get it for like rendering purposes. It's kind of helpful, but yeah. Temple of Chaos. Of course, the Black Widow strikes first, and of course, it deals with ridiculous amounts of damage to me. And only seven experience. Leather cap. Who can equip a leather cap? Can you equip a leather cap? You can, and you need defense, so. Leather cap it is. Come on, zombies. There's a zombie, or a ghoul, I should say. There's, so there's like zombie, ghoul, ghast, white. There's a whole bunch of all these like other iterations of zombies as well. Um, you're going to hate them when you play this. Because straight up, paralyze. Just paralyze. Potion. Tent. That does like nothing. Skeletones. Can you, <laughs> you can just imagine like having a band called the Skeletones and it's just like a bunch of skeletons on stage playing bone instruments and like the, the tendons of their ancestors are like the strings of the guitar. Okay, this is getting really dark. But it's an idea that I've had back in like high school and even when I went through like Lego Jurassic World I saw there was like they kind of had it sort of. They were skeletons playing actual instruments. But I kind of like want to make the Skeletones a thing. And I actually have a plan for it in one of the video games but In like one of the ones I'm developing, so it's it's gonna be a fun one. There we go. There's 
a ghoul. See, paralyzed. And he also got three hits. Like, this is a starting area, by the way. Like, this is where you fight Garland for the first time. He's, like, that's been established already. He's in the Temple of Chaos. And these monsters are doing, like, three hits and paralyzing you, too. This door's locked with the Mystic Key. <laughs> I mean, really... More enemy strikes first. And more paralyzed. Like, what the crap is up with this? Like... Also, what's with this evasion? Like... Jesus. I like that the potion was able to go first. That, that's helpful. Like, what is up with this? Like... Now we gotta run back to town. Which is unfortunate because the Gigas Worm is really hard to come by sometimes. So apparently we're not ready for the Temple of Chaos yet. Or at least my monk, for sure, is not. He has the most, or had the most HP, but his defense is so low that until he actually gets some armor that's actually usable, then it's not really going to help us much. He's kind of a glass cannon at the beginning. That's the best way to word it. Is he, he's really great for dealing damage when he can deal damage. The problem is, when can he deal damage? And it's also weird that all my preemptive attacks are coming up while he's dead. Oh my god. You'll see a lot of two-step battles in this game, by the way. And this is kind of why the game is so grindy. Uh, but this is kind of like the battle preparation side of things. And this is kind of like, it gives you a heads up as to what, what to expect from you. See? Another two-step battle, like... Stop it, goblins. Nobody loves you, not even your mother. Probably why you're so angry, but still. There we go. Cornelia. Yes, I would like to revive. I... I... I really wish I could go play that organ. Formation. There we go. Twenty experience. Yeah, we may as well get one more level up and then call it a day. We'll call it a day for the recording, but. I'll probably end up getting to like level 7 or 8 just by grinding out these monsters and and then we'll kind of tackle the rest of the story later. But the, the game is just such a grind that you kind of want to, you know, you're just going to want to, I may as well just stop the recording here actually, you're going to want to grind out some level ups every dungeon you go to essentially because otherwise you're going to run into this stuff where your monk will take too much damage because of the triple hits, or, you know. It's just... It's hard to explain why you need to level up, but, it, but for example, the monk. His nunchaku has, like, a, a base hit rate of, like, one hit. And it might go up to, like, two or three as you go along through the game. But with the monk as a barehanded, he gets more strength the more, level, more level ups he has. But also... When he's barehanded, he actually has the most hit rate. I've seen it go up to like 16 before. 
And it's like, that's what this character went, boom, 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 like literally four or five sound effects in a row. That's how many attacks he had done. Because even like the other one was like two sound effect clips and it gave three hits. And that was like going shoo, shoo, instead of just shoo. So you're, you'll start to see the sound effects kind of increasing as well. It's, it's, it's interesting to see it, but yeah. Anyway, um, now that we're kind of saved on that side of things, I am going to level up by myself. But, if you guys have any recommendations for games, please let me know. I'm more than happy to, to, li to listen to your recommendations and, and play new games. Also, with the Final Fantasy setup, it is something I am very interested to see what you guys do for your parties. Because... A lot of the the formulas that people use are like the, I mentioned this before: warrior, thief, white mage, black mage; warrior, red mage, white mage, black mage; warrior, thief, red mage, white mage; two warriors, white mage, black mage; two warriors, red mage, white mage; warrior, two red and a white; warrior, monk, white, black. So those the, those are the seven key possibilities. But I do know as well that a lot of people have tried the, the four white mage party or the four warrior party, which is a very powerhousey one. It's a very expensive friggin' party, but that's a whole other story. But there, there's like a there's a whole section on strategy wiki that goes over why the balance parties are balanced the way they are. So like warrior, thief, red mage, white mage that I tried on the last playthrough. Three strong physical fighters, access to all magic, eventually. All characters can use magic, and the ability to flee from most battles. Along with like um, an overlap, I guess, on the healing spells. So like more than one character can heal. But you can't learn the strongest black magic with that power, with that ability. And I kind of want to be able to use the, the highest amount of magic. And that's kind of why I switched over and I went to the, the Warrior Monk White Mage Black Mage, the one I always use. Because I like the unarms. It's it's very cheap to get gear for them. So there's an armor piece and there you go. Um, but yeah, I guess like overall... If one of my characters dies, the overall performance of the whole party is going to suffer. Because I'll be like, if my black mage dies, I don't have black magic anymore. White mage dies, no more healing. Monk dies, no more speed. Warrior dies, I have no one to tank damage. So I, I guess that's kind of what I'm looking at on my side of things. But a lot of other people have actually gone with two warriors and two red mages, which is kind of weird, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. You might find that um, a couple of these parties are kind of not the best. Anyway, we're going to kind of wrap this up for now. We're going to level up and kind of run around a little bit and do what I need to do. In the meantime, though, as always, I hope you guys are uh, having great gaming out there. Hopefully you're staying healthy. And uh, I look forward to, to having you join on the rest of the journey. This is a, a run where I want to get every single thing I can. Because I did also miss something in the underground area the last time we played through. So anyway, on that note, we are going to sign off for now. And if you guys have any recommendations or things you want to see me do in the video, I am more than happy to take on any recommendations. And um, if anyone knows where to get a uh, Blu-ray drive for a PS3, please let me know, because I need one. <laughs> My PS3 apparently came with a faulty Blu-ray drive that won't read discs. Great. But anyway, on that note, we're going to end this here and have fun gaming out there. As always, Laguna Matata, and I'll see you in the next video.